Hi, this is Dan from Watch Waker Appliance Repairs. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to replace this decal or touch panel on the Fish and Pike or Smart Drive washing machines. Often the buttons will break out, and um, I've got one here which is off a, a different machine. You can see the start pause button has started to, to crack away. And that can be for two reasons. That can be one, it's the start, pause, and power button the two people use most of the time, um, and then maybe a, a water level button. But also on some of these machines, the way this board was held in at the back is with pins locating and then these little wee clips which clip into place. And sometimes um, if that clip slips out of position, then people have to push a lot harder to try and get the machine to go, and they end up pushing harder and harder and breaking through the button. So um, you might have a, have a broken button there. And then you've got um, people start sticking things in to try and actually get the machine to turn on or to start, and then that'll actually then break the little micro switch that's in behind so it's kind of important to fix it up as soon as it, it breaks so if you're just replacing it for a um, you know a few tears or something like that and all the buttons are still working I'll give you a timestamp tell you where to jump through in the video just to see that but if you have got this problem where the buttons are really hard to push then what you need to do is to take this display board off the lid just lifts straight up get down the way Two screws at the back. Now of course this machine is just sitting here not plugged into anything, but before you take any screws out you need to make sure that's unplugged. This just lifts off, unhook the harness, and the black harness is plugged into where it says display. Now I'll put this lid back on just so I've got a flat surface. So generally the fix if these pegs it's usually this top one up here because that's where your your power button is or one of this bottom one down here because that's where your start button is if this has popped off you can just clip it back into place but then they can just clip out again so the fix is actually these little pins they're a little conical pin you can get a little washer a lock ring or a speed a speed lock washer i think they call it now technically you need a 3.5 mil washer to get perfectly onto there now you can't usually get 3.5 you can only get three or four mil uh, you can get these from Mitre 10 or Bunnings uh, or your local hardware store. But I know Mitre 10 and Bunnings both have them. So I usually use a 4mm washer. And we want to put one on this pin here and one on this pin here. Now if we just put that on, it's kind of just going to slide on there a bit loose. And if you have a look at it up close, you'll see that it's a slightly conical shape. And so what I do is I get a pair of pliers and squeeze the washer flat. And what that does is it squashes the conical bit in flatter so that it's um, got a smaller diameter hole. And then with the, the point up, the cone part up, we're going to put that onto the lug. And then now it's actually starting to bite into that plastic. And so as I push that on, that way now if it tries to pull off, the way that cone is shaped is just going to lock it into place. So if we put two of those washers on... Once again, this other one, I'm just going to squeeze it flat. Push that on there. And then now, because of the, the cone shape, as you're trying to slide it up, they end up actually digging into the plastic more. They'll slide down because sliding down kind of opens the hole up, but then it digs into the plastic more. You can get a 3 and a, a three mil and push it on, but then it'll usually kind of get stuck further up the cone here, you've got to really force it to spread it to get it down flat against the PCB. So it's um, it's usually easy to do it that way. Now if, as well as the plastic, the decal broken, the plastic in behind is actually broken. I'll bring this one back in. See these pieces here? These are the pieces that push the buttons. If that's broken, then you have to get a whole new display kit, unfortunately. So you can't, this is an insert, which you'll see once you take the decal off this other one. Uh, it goes out through the front. So you take the decal off, you take this plastic piece out, you keep your overall frame here, you put a new insert in, you get a new PCB with it too, because usually by the time that's broken, your micro switches has already failed or is, is very much on the way out. Um, and then you put a new decal on. So that's for a display kit, um, and then you need a new decal as well. But if you see it soon enough, you can usually stop it before it gets too, too far. So I'm going to put this back on the machine, because it's easier to actually remove the decal with it on the machine. 
So there's two different decal part numbers. Fisher and Paykel used to have several different decals in different sizes, but then when they change to this shape here, how it goes on that swoosh, what they do then is they just have one um, control, one decal, and the control panel will be longer or shorter at this this end, uh, which means that they only need two different decals. They need the 421172 as current part number for the MW model, and then the 421171 has got the uh, fancier, more options. And so they only need those two decals. They don't need one for all three sizes. Um, until you get into the latest model machines, which are of course different again. But all the smart drives, 11, 12s, and some of the 13s, uh, 13 series, is is the same uh, same decal, just two different types, NW, GW. You can't just swap a better sticker out and have more options because it's to do with the PCB, the display board, the buttons and lights behind it, and also the water valves are different uh, between the two models because one senses temperature, one doesn't. So they are slightly different, um, not just the sticker. So the key to getting this replaced cleanly is actually taking it off um, because you have this outer vinyl plasticky layer with the printing on it. You have quite a thick layer of um, adhesive there and if you just start peeling at this then you'll leave that adhesive behind and then if you stick a decal straight on top you can have all these lumps and it's going to be uneven, it's going to be bumpy, it's not going to stick properly. So you've got to clear all the way back to clean plastic and doing that with that adhesive which is really sticky gummy stuff is a real pain. So the key is the heat gun. So basically you're gonna heat it up, that sticky residue is gonna soften, and then when you peel it off, instead of just disconnecting from the, the decal, it's gonna come with the decal, or, or touch panel as Fish and Bike will call it. So I'm gonna spend about 30 seconds to a minute getting the whole decal hot, and then we'll work our way along. Right, so that's got quite hot now. It's almost too hot for me to touch. I'm gonna to pull my speed back a bit so it's not too noisy. Almost too hot to touch. I'm gonna to start in this corner. And as I'm peeling it up, I'm just looking to make sure that I've got just plastic, which is looking really good there. And then I'm just gonna go slowly. It's hot, it's coming off nice and easy. Okay, at the bottom there, it's starting to separate. You can see residue there where it hasn't quite come away cleanly. So I'm gonna slow down. Now usually I'd have this heat gun going full blast, but I've got it down a bit so that you guys can hear what I'm saying. Not that it's really that important, I'm sure you could tell what I'm doing without me blabbering. Right. So that one hasn't come away fully cleanly, which is probably a, a good thing, because um, then it, it would be a whole lot worse if I hadn't used the heat gun. So what I do from here is I get some paper towels and some label remover. So you've got CRC peel off. There's also a citrus scented, um, I think it's called label off or something like that you can get from the supermarkets. And I've also got some uh, fully evaporating contact cleaner. So now of course we've still got the power disconnected. We're technically not actually contacting anything, but we have now got the decal off, so we need that power disconnected. This PCB runs at low voltage, but it can actually be uh, referenced to, not necessarily low voltage reference to ground, it'll be low voltage reference to this internal voltage rail, so you could still get a shock off it. And so usually you just spray a bit of this contact cleaner, or sorry, just stick a remover off, and um, let it sit for a few minutes. And so can. And then it's going to turn into a real awful gummy mess. And how I used to do it before I thought to actually use the heat gun was just rip the label off. You'd have gum all over here, spray it all up, and then spend the time cleaning it off. And then you've got to clean the label remover off. So it takes a bit of a bit of a process. Uh, it's one of those things where sometimes someone comes along and shows you a simpler way to do it, and you think, why have I been doing it this hard way for so long? <laughs> is coming off nice and easy because there's not that much of it to worry about. You can see how it just spreads around in a gummy mess once the, the sticker remover has got onto it. And then I also like to remove this peel off residue because 
it's obviously made to contact or counter sticky stuff and I'm now going to be sticking a new decal on the last thing I want to do is have something in there which is going to prevent it from sticking as well you could probably use some meths uh, I use just some of this evaporating contact cleaner because it evaporates away with no residue if it sprays through onto that PCB it's not a problem and I'm also going to take the opportunity to clean out the dirt that's in this little groove here So you can actually see this separate insert here and it's got a little wee clips that you pop out from the other side so if the buttons are broken you have to take this decal off to get that um, insert out and as I said that insert comes with a display board uh, kit so putting the new one on is pretty straightforward it's just a, a peel off backing so that's clean and dry it's not too hot and I like to start at this top left hand corner now there is a small bit of a groove here and what you want to do is you don't want to start jamming up hard against that corner because if you do, if we just sit this in here for now if we start flush against that corner we've actually got a bit of a larger gap here so it usually needs to sit um, just on the raised centre portion now I usually start at the top left hand corner and I try and start off at reasonably level and I'm going to peel off and just run along and you can actually steer it to a little bit if you start going up too high what you can do is just put a bit of downward pressure which will then put a bit of a bow in it, you can see that there but you're just putting a bit of downward pressure and you can actually steer it back and that bow will come out and so as long as you're not way off in an angle you can actually kind of bring it back and just keep it let's start the other corner, keep it centralised and you probably start from that right hand side and use that flat edge to line up uh, it's just the way that I've always done it so I'm sitting it in here making sure it's not going hard into that corner, it's just sitting about a millimeter out and then now I'm going to take that part I've started peeling and I'm holding it away so it's not just so as soon as it touches it's basically going to grab and I'm already a little bit too high so I'm just going to be using this top edge to get straight it's actually coming too close on this lower edge so I'm going to pull it up a little bit I'm not going to try and peel it off again because once it's on it's really stuck so you see I've actually got a ripple here but it's going to be a small enough ripple that I can just work it out so that way we can um, tune it and there we go it's not quite perfect like a machine to put it on but it looks a lot nicer than it did and that way we're not going to have dirt debris going into those buttons uh, and onto that control board and doing further damage having to buy a new display board Thanks for watching. If you've got any questions, feel free to ask down below in the comments. I do check every couple of days and I'll answer if there's any way I can help you. Cheers. Yeah, I put another screw.